My name is Thomas Denny, and I'm a stained glass artist, which in my case has emerged from a life as a painter with these windows for St. Catherine's Chapel at Leicester Cathedral. I would like to feel that the bigger theme is a universal theme. Not that I would want to deny the meaning and significance of a particular life, the life of Richard III, for example, but I would like to feel that that life and the work of art that has emerged from pondering on it has more universal application. There's a whole range of different kinds of tools and processes one can use from line like this, where individual marks can be applied to the surface using areas of tone and working them in with the badger brush. And then the other thing, of course, is taking off the paint again. It's in many ways what one sees with glass paint is the light rather than the dark lines. It makes more sense to work back to light. And so putting on areas of paint like this can then be cut back or rubbed back to get to the underlying light. Much of the drawing can be done like so with a, a kind of needle on a stick which can cut through the paint and make specifically light marks through the dark. The first thing I would do in a window is decide on the glass to be used. These windows are going to be largely red and yellow gold. I can do that by using two layers often, sometimes one layer, of flash glass. One can then attack that colour by acid etching to lighten it or to remove it. And with two layers of glass, almost infinite colour possibilities are there. This area I'm working on just now, a tumbling of shapes below this central figure group, is to do with the idea of the residue or remnants of a life or a history, fragments of paper scrunched up and torn with a suggestion of lettering. And I'm trying to make marks that convey the fluid and beautiful quality of 15th century calligraphy without being exactly legible. So it's as though one seeing unreachable fragments of writing that are to do with the life of such a one as Richard III. A group of figures above is um, one in despair, a broken man seeking comfort very much as Richard the third wrote in prayers that he was yearning to be relieved from the burdens and agonies of his life. There comes a time when I feel that I have finished a window, then it returns to Patrick Costello, who first knew the glass in its raw state when he cut it, perhaps eight months previously, and now it returns to him, ready to be leaded up. I feel that the collaboration I have with Patrick is a very good balance in that the aesthetic decisions about the leading are made by me, but the physical craftsmanship is done by him. Once the window is leaded, light is only coming through colour, not through the little slithers of space between. And then there's another phase of fixing, and at Leicester, the fixing is going to be done by a stained glass colleague called Ben Sinclair. The alarming aspect of fixing is not the doing of it, which has its own nerve-wracking qualities. Will someone drop a panel on their way up the scaffolding? No, what's alarming is how terrible a window can appear when it first starts to enter. When, say, two or three panels have gone in, those two or three panels are surrounded by the empty space, the daylight. Even though I've seen this many times, I still feel a terrible anxiety about making the window too dark. 
help. There it is. It's going in. And look at it. It looks so black and grimy. And that's how it'll look until the moment when the final panel goes in and the light is closed down and it's finished. So it's actually very difficult to see how it's going to be until the end.